And finally, we are uh, going to talk about the last second order effect that we will cover, and that is um, the reverse leakage current. Reverse leakage current. And uh, the effect may be just obvious from the name. Um, when we turn off the transistor, we have talked about how our, the how the base current becomes equal to zero and the collector current becomes equal to zero, so no current flow through the transistor in cutoff. Uh, in all reality, when the base emitter junction is reverse biased, yeah, as well as the base collector junction, uh, there is always a small amount of reverse leakage current through a reverse bias pin junction. And um, in the case of the transistor, that is no different, and so the reverse leakage current is the um, small reverse collector current when the transistor is in cutoff. And if we remember from the diode equation, uh, we have an exponential relationship between the current through the diode or through the PN junction and the voltage across, and so we could write that uh, the current through the emitter, but since we have already established that we're going to approximate the collector current to the emitter current, will be equal to IS, which is called the saturation current, and it depends on uh, the device physics and geometry, E to the PVE over the thermal voltage. Again, if we make VBE equal to zero, then E to the zero is equal to one, and therefore IC becomes equal to IS, that's small saturation current. Uh, for a typical MPN transistor, it's gonna be in the order of nanoamps, so very small, but different from zero. And so if we were to represent it in our IV characteristic, that will just mean that instead of having uh, that the small um, IC equals zero uh, current line for the cutoff, we will instead have some current, which what we call um, IS or reverse uh, collector current, and um, for VBE equals zero, meaning transistor in cutoff. All right, and that's it for the um, the different second order effects. Thank you.